So my name, I'm Breck Max, and I'm the Business and Finance Counselor here at the Native American Development Center in Bismarck, North Dakota, 2403 East Thayer. And um, nice complex here. We've got a big, uh, uh, big complex here. Um, there's a couple different entities, ourselves, the Native American Development Center, and on the other side is Native Inc. And uh, all under one umbrella. Um, Lorraine Davis is our CEO, um, and um, we've been operating. I think we're coming up on our 10-year anniversary since she, um, since the inception of this um, organization. Um, I came on about uh, a year ago, March, and uh, my primary focus has been economic development, working with our native entrepreneurs, and also the other so the other side of the coin is working with our our, our native um, consumer credit individuals, people that need help. With their with their finances, their personal credit, credit cards, FICO scores, all of that fun stuff. So, what I'm going to do, just a real easy dive here into just into what we do here at the center. And um, if this information is useful to you, that's awesome. And if you know somebody, you know who wants to become an entrepreneur, or they already are, and they need some help, or if you know you've got a family, a relative, a, a colleague, a friend that needs some help with. Uh, you know, credit um, rehabilitation, et cetera. They're more, you're more than welcome to refer them on over to me. I'll be happy to help them. All of our services are free. We don't charge anything. So there's my contact information. So our mission is to assist Native American consumers and entrepreneurs to achieve their dreams of financial freedom and owning their own business. We serve Native American applicants both on and off the reservation in North Dakota. Um, we're a little bit loose with that. It's uh, um, and I know that our CEO is talking ab about. Um, oh, here, let me back up. Did I go by too for quick here? Can you see it? Okay, sure. Good. And I will uh I'll make sure whoever wants my, you know, business card, I can certainly uh you should have my email. We can always um communicate by email too if you need or call me. So As I said, um we we primarily work in North Dakota here and even further primarily here in the Bismarck Mandan area, but we are um you know available to the tribe you know individuals and tribes across north dakota and we are eventually going to be branching out more into south dakota as well um to our friends and relatives down there um which is awesome i grew up on standing rock i um i'm mha enrolled up at uh fort berthold but i grew up on standing rock down on the grand river there little eagle mclaughlin area so that's home to me so i'm originally from south dakota have family up here in in Bismarck. So a little bit about our programs. Um, first is the consumer finance counseling. As I mentioned, you know, we work with a lot of our, our native individuals, you know, um, primarily one on one um, consultations to help them rehabilitate their FICO scores or improve their personal finances. Um, hello, hello, Abby. We've got Hi. our speaker. We've got our speaker. So I'm just going to quick, Abby, um, give it, let give you a little breathing room here. I'm going to just quick run through our slides for the for our programs, and then we'll we'll get your get you rolling. Okay. Perfect. Sounds awesome. good. Awesome. Awesome. So consumer finance counseling. You know, we get to learn uh, the individuals, help them with their credit. Um, talk about the credit bureaus and their roles. Uh, credit reports. Um, understanding and maintaining your FICO score. All that fun stuff. That's always a challenge. Life happens, so we're here to help in that regard. Um, if they're really challenged and they need some help getting back on their feet, we do have a uh, consolidation loan, a reconsolidation loan of debt up to $3,000 we can help them out with. Um, of course, there are some uh, steps, you know, um, some qualifications for that. To be eligible, you've got to be from North Dakota, uh, enrolled in a federally recognized tribe. Um, 
loan amounts are available based on what we've got in the bank, our loan pool at the time, and you've got to be able to show uh, repayability. So you've got to have a J-O-B. You've got to have a job, <laughs> of course, to pay the loan back. It's not a grant. It's an actual loan because uh, once you pay that loan off, we'll let the uh, credit bureaus know that you that you did so, and hopefully we can push the algorithm to get your, your FICO score up. Um, eligible loan purposes include debt consolidation, housing stabilization. You know, if you're behind on your rent, you've got some back rent, we can help in that regard um, to some degree. You know, educational expenses, medical, personal, all those things that could disrupt your credit history and your FICO score. We will hope that that reconsolidation loan can help mitigate and and slow down or, or or mend some of the damage that's going on to your credit. Yeah. Um, if your score's pretty low or your credit invisible, we may ask you to you know enroll in a um, counseling with us to get some more individualized you know one on one help to get you back on the road. And as I mentioned, we'll let the the credit bureaus know about your successful payoff of your reconsolidation. Uh, loan once that is done. Make you look good, get your FICO score um, back on the road to recovery. This is not an emergency loan. Um, a loan application and personal financial information will be required, so there is a paper chase involved with getting the application done and various um, documents that will also require for, you know, for applicants to provide to us so that we can do a do our due diligence as well and make sure you know, that it, there is a re repayability on the loan. So although, you know, we say it's it's not an emergency loan, there are there may be some items that um, are included that are in fact, you know, you know, your car breaks down, you can't get to work. Hey, that's going to affect your credit score. You can't pay your bills. So those are all things that we take into consideration, most definitely. So. All right, the other. Um, on the entrepreneurial side, the small business economic development side, um, we provide uh, small business consulting. Um, if you want to receive some help in putting together a business plan, I'm here to help you out in that regard. You know, bounce ideas off of me. You know, this is your first time as an entrepreneur. You've got an idea for a business and you've identified a market and you think that it could really uh, fly. You know, I'm here to help. Um, are you an entrepreneur? This little checklist, this is uh, these are things that people need to think about before they do step into the arena of entrepreneurship and starting their own small business. Um, boy, oh boy, if you think you're just going to hire help to, to run the business, that's the quickest way to <laughs> get in trouble. And we don't want that. We want you to be successful. The six M's of uh, small business success. If you're deficient in any one of these, the men and women money machines material ma materials minutes and market if you're deficient in one of those areas you can expect to have some problems with your with your small business whether you're existing or a startup so make sure you've got your bases covered in that regard um the uh, we also have a micro enterprise loan from 5000 minimum up to 20000 for uh, for startup and existing businesses if you want to do a, a a small expansion, you know, you need a backhoe or you need some more inventory or equipment, whatever the case may be, um, that's available. Um, we require you to be either a corporation, sole proprietorship, LLC, or a partnership, some kind of legal entity before we can lend to you. Um, starting a new business, eligible loan purposes are starting a new business, expanding an existing, working capital, uh, mobilization fees or funds, um, purchase of equipment, machinery, furniture, fixtures, purchase of inventory, those are all allowable. Gap funding, that's allowable. Other loan purposes, um, other transactions where the mission is to foster the growth of a business in native communities. So that one's a little wide, more wide open. Um, and our, and it's it, all of our applications go before the the loan committee and our CEO. So if you have an idea, you know, something that is going to really positively impact um, Indian country, a native community uh, with jobs or economic development, um, they'll definitely take a look at that. You know, you'll still need to put together, you know, your application and a full business plan. 
uh, to present to them. But um, they do have that latitude, you know, uh, and consideration for, um, you know, projects that will specifically impact Indian country in a positive way. So here's some of the stuff that you'll need to, and I have all of this. If we have anybody on, Ellen or Matt, that, you know, if you want to know more about um, on the business side here, just let me know and I'll shoot you over our application and the checklist, all of the stuff that you'll need in order to apply for that, that loan fund. So any questions? I know both of you don't have mics today. That's fine though, no, I'll watch the chat. Okay. All right. So with that, that was my, okay here. Okay, that's fine, that's fine, Ellen. Okay, with that, I'm gonna just quickly, uh, let's get, uh, okay, for interest rates, pretty nominal. You know, they're very reasonable. We're not usurious, we're not out to make a big buck. We're here to help our people. So um, depending on the size and scope of the loan, I mean, it could be between six to 10%. It just depends on your credit history and you know how much you're asking for. And of course we do have a loan officer on staff um, and she will, she'll take a look at it. And um, if it affects cash flow, there's some, there's some flexibility there, I'm sure. You know, anything that we can do to help um, get that small business off the ground successfully. So that answer your question, Matt? Okay, excellent. All righty, I'm gonna, Abby, I'm gonna throw up your slides here and we'll get you going. Perfect. So happy that you're on. I know. <laughs> do, you have, do you have a story to tell us? <laughs> I, I let everybody know that you were down in Pine Ridge area. Yeah, so we ended up, we got our space. You did, awesome, awesome. Okay, and I'm gonna, I'm going to hand the football off to you here. Let's see if I can Perfect. do that. Are you able to get control of the uh, of the slides yep. there? It, it gave it, me the buttons. All right, awesome. Perfect. So you're ready to roll. Thank you. OK, right, so with so that, um, Go right ahead, um, Abigail, make your introductions and let us know more about yourself and the program. Sure, so I'm Abigail Omdahl. Um, I've been with uh, the Native American Development Corporation out of Billings for uh, a little over a year, not quite a year and a half. Um, and so we have this um, PowerPoint is a little old. We haven't fully updated our logos and everything. So PTAC has made a transition from procurement technical assistance centers to now we're Apex accelerators. And so um, with that, um, it's a lot of the same, all of our services that we can have are the same. It's just our focuses are a little different. And so it's a lot more focused on defense contracts and innovation. Um, but we can still help with general government contracts as well and tribal contracts. Um, and so um, in my mind, a lot of the changes are gonna be good because they're our goals are set on actual helping you instead of just the number of hours that we spend with you. And so I think overall, all the changes are gonna lead to a lot more success for our program. Um, and with that, I will get started telling you about um, what we do. So our, NADC um, was established in 1996. Um, we became a CDFI in 2001. Um, our loans are only for Montana um, companies, um, so I won't go into that, um, but BREC is going to be your source for loans. Um, and so our PTAC started in 2009, um, and then we have consulting services available as well and they started in 2011 um and then in 2018 we um have the urban indian health center as well in billings um so we kind of have our hands everywhere as a nonprofit. um and so for apex um what we want to be is just help 
companies grow into um, government contracts. Um, and our service region is Montana, Wyoming, and the Dakotas. Um, so my background, I have worked for government contractors for um, probably closer to five years than three. Um, and I spent 10 years of my career in operations management for um, mostly Walmart and then restaurants. Um, and then three years I spent at the corporate headquarters for Walmart. So working with large companies and I have a little bit of a different view than a lot of people that have worked for and with the government. So it's just a new perspective. Um, so for this training, um, we're going to go over just basic understanding of government contracts and what that entails to do business with the government. Um, you'll learn where you need, what you need to do to get started. And then once you're registered, where to go from there. Um, the importance of marketing, but not just marketing, it's mostly networking when you're doing business with the government. Um, and then I'll have a bunch of resources for you. So before you can get our services, um, you do need to be established and in business. Um, we can't help you as a startup. Um, I can help you find people like Breck that will help you with your business plan, but you need that business plan and you need a couple or at least a year under your belt um, before you can start working on government contracts. Um, you need to make sure that you have the time um, you need financing too, but government contracting is very admin heavy. And so you need to make sure you have the time to dedicate to that. Um, you also need to make sure you have the money and the people. Breck, do you see them changing? Oh, I see. Oh, I think you need to navigate. Because when I click sync, it goes back to the second one. Can you move it to the sixth one? There we go. Okay, so here's the checklist. Um, the one thing a lot of people don't have, and there are resources to help you get, is a working computer. <laughs> Almost everything with the government is online, whether it's forms, um, all of the certifications, not much is like print and mail anymore. So you need to have a really solid computer um, with internet capabilities. Um, there's a lot of spreadsheets. And then when you submit a bid, you want to make sure you have, um, you don't need Microsoft Word, but like Google Docs or something. Um, because those bids do get 100 pages plus sometimes. So you you don't want to be doing that from your phone. Um, and then you want to make sure you have a record keeping system. Um, on every contract you get, you won't be audited, but it is common. And so you need to make sure you maintain all of your documents just in case. Um, but it also helps you um, just run run a better business when you have access to and can analyze um, where you were versus where you are. Um, accounting is also extremely important when you're doing government contracting. Um, and so we typically recommend um, spreadsheets are hard. If you have a system like QuickBooks or another similar system, um, it makes it it takes a lot of pressure off you as the owner when that's one less thing you have to worry about. Um, 
typically that's worth the spend to get an accountant or a system like that. Um, and then you want to maintain all of your communications as well. So and get if you're communicating with anyone from the government, if it was over the phone call, something helpful is to send an email to recap it and then you save that in your in your records. Um, you can go to the next slide. All right, so what do we offer? Um, we kind of do an onboarding. Um, so when we take you on as a new client, um, we'll personalize some trainings based on where your knowledge and where your company is. Um, and so if you already know the basics of the government, we'll go beyond the government 101 and 102. Um, we'll set you up with our bid matching system, which will look through federal, state, and local systems to find contracts that match what your company's capabilities are. And then we'll help you with your marketing. We'll help you find people to network with. We'll help you find networking events. Um, we can help you research um, past spending for certain agencies. We can help you kind of narrow down your target market. And then we help you with what's called your capabilities statement and your capabilities narrative, which is just like a one, one to two page document that is kind of like your company's resume. Um, and then we help you pitch that to government contractors. So it just helps you talk about yourself a little bit better. Super um, important, right, Abby? Super yes. important, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Because there's um, some solicitations called sources sought, where they're just looking for who's out there. All you need to respond to those typically is your capability statement. So if you have that done and ready to go, you're always ready to respond to those. Um, you want, we help you with the contract acquisition. And so that's where networking is super, super important. Um, a lot of companies get nervous to spend money on attendance to like conferences and other things. And so we'll help you find free ones, first of all. And second of all, um, there are resources um, like the Disadvantaged Business Enterprise. Um, it depends on the state, but some states will pay for you to go to conferences as long as that will result in you getting more Department of Transportation contracts. And so there's things like that that can help you get admission to conferences at low or no cost. But then we'll help you determine, say you find an expensive one that, that you think is good, we'll help you determine if that's actually going to be worth your time as well. Um, because those are so important. That's where you're going to meet those people that are actually buying um, your product or service. Um, insurance is a tricky one. Uh, we help you navigate that and figure out if you need insurance or bonding and how much you need. And then we can help you help you find the right place to get it to. Um, so we help take your business plan that you have and modify it for government um, because marketing and selling to the government is its own beast. Um, so you you don't have to, but it's helpful to have a completely separate business plan for your government line. Um, so we can help you with that if that if you're big enough. When you're just starting out in government markets, you don't need to go that far. Um, but once you grow and that's a huge line, absolutely, you can send that to me. Um, and then the statement of cash flows is something that a lot of for grants specifically, if you want, there's some grants you can get that will help with a specific contract and they'll ask for like a statement of cash flows. And just to to speak on your company, it helps to be able to know where your cash is coming and going. Um, so that's something that we can help with as well. Um, really, all of it kind of boils into like being able to speak better about your company's capabilities and um, how you fit whatever agency. Um, and then the big one that we help with that probably 80% of our time is, is getting registered in all of the systems necessary. Um, the one that's tricky is SAM. You almost can't do that without our help, which is unfortunate <laughs> for small businesses, but it helps us. Um, it's really tricky, especially if you're rural, because they, they'll reject your address. 
Um, we'll help you determine which NAICS codes, which are your industry codes, which ones you want to use. Um, and that just kind of helps you research um, contracts, but it also helps contracting officers find you when they're doing their research. Um, and then there's certifications that we'll go over that um, I can help you sign up for. You can go to the next slide. So these are the major certifications that we help with. Um, there are state specific ones as well. Um, and then that DBE that I mentioned, it's federally funded, but it's run by each individual state. And so these are the federal certifications. The small business, that one's just determined based on your size and how or how many employees you have. So either your revenue or the number of employees. And that's determined by your industry code. Um, 8A, um, woman owned, service disabled, and then the hub zone. Um, there are also Indian business set asides for now. That isn't one you have to certify for. That's just something that you check when you register your company in SAM. Um, you can go to the next slide. And so this is why these certifications are important. The federal government has spending goals, and I believe it's official that they went up, but I don't have the new numbers. I believe the total for small business is 25, but I don't know the breakouts of the, the subsects. Um, so 5% of contracts should be women-owned, 5% are for disadvantaged, small disadvantaged, 3% should be hub zone. Um, and then 3% is service disabled veteran. That hub zone, um, every reservation is automatically considered a hub zone, um, which is a historically underutilized business zone. And so that's one, if your employees live on the reservation and you're located on the reservation, um, that's a good one because that's the, gov that's the goal that the government almost never meets. And so they're always looking for more hub zone companies. Um, Bismarck Mandan is tricky because there's one tiny little zone. I think it's downtown Bismarck and I think it got smaller because it just changed in July. So if you're in town in North Dakota, it's a little trickier. Um, but if you're rural, that's a, that's a pretty easy one to get. <clears throat> um, so these certifications, what they do is they narrow down your competition. And so if you are this is why these sources SOC are so important because if you respond and another company responds that's also just say you're both small businesses that contracting officer can set it aside so it's just for small businesses so no large businesses can compete and then it goes even further if two women-owned respond it'll be women-owned um and so it it limits your competition and so if you can find other if you're woman owned and you both you find another company that's woman owned and you both respond, then maybe you're only competing against that other person. Um, and then when the contracting officers are doing their research, they have there's a database that you're in. And so when you have these certifications, they'll filter and they'll look for you also. And so that's another way to get noticed. Um, you can go to the next slide. So these are the typical um, requirements. There's some have more, some have less. Um, but the size, you have to be a small business for all of them. Um, and like I said previously, it varies by industry. So some industries are going to be the number of employees you have, and some are going to be your revenue. Um, economic disadvantage. So 8A, you have to be economically disadvantaged, and then there's an economically disadvantaged women-owned small business. Um, I think these just changed to, but I'm not sure. Um, the You have to have a net worth of less than 750,000 and an unadjusted. So basically the adjusted means like your home isn't included and a few other things. Um, for the 750 and then when it's unadjusted it has to be less than 6 million um, and then your average income has to be less than 350,000. Um, you do have to pr prove potential for success 
Um, and so that's where you just have to be in business and have been doing government contracts for typically they want two years, but typically if you have a contract or two, especially a federal or a subcontract for a federal prime, um, that that's all they need. And so once we sign up, we kind of just make a plan for three to five years out to do that 8A because um, it's only nine years and you can only do it once. So if you sign up for that too early, you'll miss out on some opportunities and you might not get the most out of that program. Um, so we typically say you want to be contracting for a couple of years before you do that one, just because if you do it at the right time, it can help you grow exponentially. Um, ownership, you have to prove ownership. Um, and so for women owned, it has to be 51% woman owned for Indian owned, 51% Indian owned. Um, and then the tricky parts for that are, um, just what, if you have stock, you have to make sure that there's no one that can buy that, um, to challenge that ownership. And then you also have to prove that you control the company, which would be making all large decisions and that no one has any kind of um, control over you making those decisions or influence. Um, and so for that, it's typically like a resume that you submit um, for that. You can go on to the next slide. Um, this is where we come in. We help you with the certification process because it's a lot of paperwork. Um, so typically we'll help you organize that paperwork and then um, we'll sit either sit with you side by side and do it together um, or virtually. Um, for some, most of them, it's self-certified. So um, the Indian owned is self-certify, small business is self-certify, and then just regular old veteran is self-certify. The women owned and economically disadvantaged women owned, those are the same application. The economic disadvantage just has a few more, um, a few, a lot of extra documentation, actually. It's not just a few. But um, the 8A is um, pretty hefty. Um, and then HubZone is the one that's in a different system. 8A and women owned are in the same. It's certified.sba.gov. HubZone, I think, is eventually moving there, but for now it's still in the general login system. Um, but they've simplified the process. So the HubZone one is a lot less documentation and work than it used to be. Um, the woman owned has been recently updated, and that one has gotten a little tricky, but mostly just because the website functionality. And then 8A... It's very heavy on the paperwork side, but the system itself is pretty easy to navigate. Um, you can go to the next slide. And so these are just typically what you need to prove to do business with the government. And so um, things to think about when you're doing any kind of bid or any kind of marketing, whether it's your CAPE statement or practicing your elevator pitch, or anything like that. Um, so how bids are evaluated are the price. That's number one for the government almost always. Um, some of them have technical requirements, and so you need to meet those specifications. Um, they'll look at capabilities and past performance, so you have to prove that you've done this before. Um, it doesn't always have to prove that you've done it for the federal government. So subcontracting, state contracts, local contracts, and sometimes commercial experience. Um, if you have enough of that, that's enough for you to win that federal contract. Um, those preferences and set-asides, um, those are really important because it's a, it's a pretty big competitive advantage if you can get those set aside because you're competing against a lot less companies. Um, environmental impact is pretty huge now for most agencies. And so you just need to make sure um, you're aware of how you are affecting the environment. Um, you need adequate resources, um, which would be the experience, the equipment, um, and the people or bonding. Um, if you do, this is the cool thing for small businesses. If you don't have the right people or the person or the equipment, if you can prove you can obtain it before the contract starts, that's enough. And so whether that's 
um, say a loan from Breck that is, hey, if you get this contract, we will loan you X dollars. Um, you do have to have a statement saying that. And same for like, if you need like a subject matter expert, if you have an agreement signed with them to say, hey, if we get this contract, this person will be on our payroll. Um, and same for like, if you don't necessarily have that equipment now, if you have a lease showing like, hey, if we get this contract, it's ready to go. Um, if you show that, that's enough to get that contract typically. Um, you don't have to have it in your possession before you bid. Um, some have special standards. Um, anytime there's going to be anything outside of the normal, it's going to be in that solicitation. And so you just have to make sure you read the whole thing and know that you meet every part of any technical skills. Um, and then subcontractors, um, if you are the prime, it's your responsibility to vet all of your subcontractors and make sure that they are as capable as you for doing any work. Um, you can move to the next slide. So once you're one of our clients and once we've got you registered um, in SAM and any other um, award systems, um, we want to identify your target market. And that's typically which agency or agencies you want to sell to. Um, or if, if you want to just do regional versus the whole country, um, that kind of stuff will help you narrow that down. We'll help you identify who your competition is um, because you need to know what where you're better than them um, and be able to talk about that too. So we'll help you with that. We help you um, research agency budgets, evaluate the markets. Um, all the government agencies put out their forecast so you can look at their past spending and their predicted spending. Um, and small businesses don't have time for that. So that's where we can come in. And once once we know where your plans are, then we can do that research for you and get that typed up so that you just have one quick document to look over. Um, there are other organizations that help. Um, North Dakota has a state PTAC. We are the PTAC for Indian owned companies, but say you need something that you need to meet in person and we can't get to North Dakota, um, we can help you meet with, um, it's Dave that's in Bismarck. So, and we have good relationships with them. So if that's something that you need, that's something we can help you with. Um, the SBDC, they are great in North Dakota. Um, the best probably out of our region is North Dakota. Um, there's small disadvantaged offices, there's economic development offices in each tribe, um, and there's all sorts of people we can connect you with um, if you need something that we can't provide. Um, knowing people is probably the most important thing when it comes to government contracting, and so we'll help connect you with those people, we'll help connect you with those events um, where you can network and things like that. Um, another thing to think about is maintaining a LinkedIn profile. Almost all government contractors, those um, contracting officers and the small business liaisons, they almost all have LinkedIn profiles and a lot of them do their research there. I know the Air Force does. Um, and then you want to start small. So don't take on a contract you don't think you can do take on your first and few contracts something you know you'll blow out of the water and that way you'll have really really strong past performance um you can go to the next slide oh that was all any questions <clears throat> our attendees don't have microphones at this time but they're welcome to put something in the chat Ellen, Matt, anything? I have to say, you know, for the, the two years that I was a PTAC counselor, boy. OK, all right, good, good. I have to say, yeah, there's so many things involved, so many moving parts, isn't there, Abby, in terms of, you know, wanting to be successful yeah. in that arena. Um, can you give us a little bit of a lowdown, your insights, you know, since you've been there in terms of the SAM, the system for, uh, oh, uh, um, what is it called? It's the SAM now, the acronym. Award management, yeah. Award management, system for award management. I know it was a bear when I was there 
Has it gotten it's any better? It's got worse. It's gotten worse. <laughs> I don't. I can't imagine how it could get worse. <laughs> so, basically give it to us. Last... Tell us straight what what what's going on in that regard, and then just maybe uh, fill in everybody a little bit more about the Sam. How critical it is. Can't have. You can't do business without it, right? Right. Um, so the system for award management, Sam, is it's you have to have you have to be registered in there and have your unique identifier. Um, which you get once you're registered. And then you also have to register for your cage, which I can't think of what that stands for right now. But um, your cage is how you get paid from the federal government when you're doing federal contracts. Um, and so that's super important. And if you're not active, they cannot pay you. Um, and so you need to start that process early and renewals early. Um, so basically what happened is a new contractor got the website contract and um, they changed everything and it's been a disaster. Um, so they validate your address and they're much more strict with that now. Um, and typically if you live in town, we haven't seen nearly as many. Like if you get mail from the US Postal Service, they've almost ironed out all of the issues with that. And so if you get mail from US Postal Service, you're good and we can help you renew very quick. It's when you are rural. Um, and you don't get mail from the Postal Service, that it's really tricky to verify that address. Um, thank you. Mm, yeah. I had to think about it, too. <laughs> I found it. <laughs> I fished it out. And so you need all this extra documentation if you don't get post mail from the Postal Service. Um, and typically that's typically if your secretary of state is good and up to date and accurate, um we can take a screenshot of that and send that and for a few months that was working great and then i think they must have had a high turnover and now they're rejecting a lot of them again and so it honestly just boils down to me having to call the help desk for you to be like hey this is all good can we approve it now so it's not that anything they've added extra steps it's i th honestly think it's just that the people there aren't trained and so we as your apex have to advocate for you um, because we know rural America exists. Um, and even though the Postal Service doesn't deliver there, uh, people live there and work there. So and then the cage has been pretty easy. It's just if you're rural, you need either a lease for your com corporate address um, or a, the deed if you own it or a utility bill. And um, typically, we were having to email to be like, hey, here's this. And now they're, they'll like deny it. And then you just resubmit and then it'll go to a person and then they'll email you and be like, hey, do you have this? And then you just send it. So the cage has got the cage is fixed, but you have okay. to do SAM before you can do cage. Okay. Um, and it usually requires me to sit on phone with help desk for you because I'm not going to make a small business do that. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Um, which entity is that that, um, that ran the cage. Do you recall Our, which? So cage is DLA. DLA. Okay, DLA. They do it themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Sam, it's Ernst and Young, which is an accounting firm, and I don't know how they got the contract. Okay. <laughs> All righty. Okay, Matt. Thank you so much for being on with us today. Appreciate that. Um, any other questions, Matt? You can always reach out to myself or to to Abigail here, Abby, um, by phone or email, and um, we'll try to help you out. Um, what else is there? Anything? I'm just trying to recall from my PTAC days there. I know. Um, yep, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, in terms of North Dakota, you know, um, what's your caseload? Like how many clients are you wor working with right now? I think now? I have probably 10 that are really active, but 40 that I About see 40. regularly. Okay. 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 Alrighty, alrighty. Um, and I suppose they run the, the spectrum from the the small pickup and shovel, and then uh, I don't know how, what's your you know like your biggest. Um... See the big ones, they only need me for things like Sam, so I don't get to yeah. work all the fun stuff for them. Yeah, yeah. Because they have people that know how to do it, so and the mm -hmm. time. Right, right. So you're down in South Dakota this week. Yep. And um, were were you meeting with clients or? We 
are doing a capability statement workshop. So hopefully we'll have one for North Dakota Ooh, maybe next okay. month. Okay, awesome, awesome. Um, give me, send me an invite. I mean, I know I'm not into the into that, but it is it is interesting to know, or maybe get a re little refresher for myself too, on stuff like that. Yeah, oh yeah. What are the details on the workshop? Yeah. <laughs> so we've actually made it pretty fun and interactive. We go over basically the boring stuff, why it's important, what it is, and then we do examples together. And then I haven't scheduled one for North Dakota yet. The one in South Dakota is this afternoon. This afternoon. Oh, she's oh, from South Dakota. She needs to be on. We're in Kyle. <laughs> We're in Kyle now. Are you so doing you a come. webinar? Okay. Is it, it going to be a webinar online or just in person? Just in person, but we'll just schedule in another one next month. Or so, maybe, maybe not till September. But we'll do. We weren't having good attendance on our webinar, so we've been trying to do in person. Yeah, yeah it's so, a challenge. Yeah, but I'll make sure that I get you the details when we come back. Yeah. Um, we have. I'll make sure I get your email from Breck, and then I'll get add you to our email list. Otherwise, we post them on our Facebook. We try to too. I've got all the registrants' email, and I think your phone number too. So, yep, yep, I can certainly get that to Abby. No problem. Yeah, so we've been doing the capability statement one because I feel like our clients haven't known how important they are. And it's something that they're like, oh, well, we can get to that later. And then mm -hmm. I feel like I have to push them a lot. So mm -hmm. we're, we've just been doing these and we were trying to make them really interactive so you can leave with at least a rough draft. Mm -hmm. And then an elevator pitch to go with it so that you're getting more comfortable talking about it because a lot oh, of people yeah. struggle with that because they feel like they're bragging mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah it's somewhere it's somewhere in between a business card and a brochure kind of yeah. a, this amalgam but it is so critical to have and it's got specific um ingredients to that to that document that are so important to the to the um the agencies you know the government entities they want to know everything about you and what you can do and boy you know um abby that is such a that is a big huge service that you guys provide there um and yeah take advantage of it as much as you can alan um take advantage of everything that they offer over there um eh, you know other things um hub zone i know that was a big one struggling um has that gotten a little bit easier or is it still uh, i haven't a, done a one challenge yet since they one. changed the system but it's supposed to be way easier it is okay and it seems okay. at least from like the sba website and all the documentation you need it i can tell it's going to be a lot easier but mm -hmm. i haven't done one with the new system yet okay yeah so cap capability statement okay all right well thank you so much for attending Perfect. ellen thank you yeah yeah so um well we're still recording so i can still pick your brain a little bit yeah <laughs> Yeah, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to put together a little video and we'll throw this up on on our website and on YouTube and um, we'll just spread the, you know, the good word about what you guys are doing over there. Perfect. Um, and I, 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 uh, I, I totally um, understand. I, I, I kind of got triggered just going through this PowerPoint with you, just thinking about <laughs> everything that I was challenged with, you know, um, and um, you're right, you know, in your portfolio, there's about five or 10 that are you really, really active with. And then there's some that are, you know, they've got their act together, but they like to know that you're there in case, you know, you know, you're that their, their uh, lifeline that they yeah. need to, for whatever the case may be. So, or especially so um, for by Indian when they're not mm -hmm. honoring that, we're the resource mm -hmm. for that. Yeah, yeah. So any other words, any other, I guess, you know, for anyone who's going to watch the video here, any other suggestions, words of encouragement or anything um, that you want to throw in there, Appen? I guess one thing that I haven't added to this PowerPoint is the innovation. That's a huge push for us and a okay. huge new partner. And so in North Dakota, it's UND is your uh, fast grant it's called and so they can help businesses get those innovation grants through SBIR or STTR mm -hmm. okay. um, 
and they are amazing over at UND. They have the whole innovation center. Um, and then if you need help researching, it's a college, so you can get an intern and they can get wow. called credit. So wow. um, Montana has that as well. I haven't worked out partnerships with South Dakota or Wyoming yet, but it's they're putting a lot of money into this program and the mm -hmm. resources to go with it. And so it's really cool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good, good. Well, uh, with that, if if you don't have anything else, Abby, you know, we can wind this down. I really want to thank you for coming on today and being with us. And like I said, I'm going to throw this up on our YouTube and any of our other social media that our marketing person wants to put it out there. And and um, we'll just spread the good word about all your efforts, Abby. You guys have got a big a big area, the the Dakotas, Montana, Wyoming. How many how many other counselors besides yourself have you got on staff right now? So we have in the office, there's three of us, and then we have one contractor and then one part time person in Helena. In Helena. OK, excellent. OK, all right. Well, thank you so much, Abby. I know you're going to get ready for you've got a workshop this afternoon yet, so you got to get yep. out there and 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 prep for that. So I thank you so much again and we will talk again soon. I hope we can do this again soon, maybe sometime next spring or something. We can do something Absolutely. else. Uh, come at it from another angle or if there's something else that you really want to focus on I'd be happy to to um, do another webinar with you so thank you yeah, so maybe much I'll throw something together for innovation yeah there we go there we go awesome awesome well you take care have a great day have a safe trip back home okay thank you thanks for All having right, me take care you bet. you're welcome bye-bye